ground, yellow bird formation is a formation of two, led by Stearman, Foxtrot, Alpha, Alpha Golf. Number two is Chipmunk, Foxtrot, Bravo, and Emma Mike. We're on a training flight to the south. We'd like to taxi instructions. I'm happy to share my first formation lesson. I'll be right here with you. Uh, you have control. Yeah, all right, I have control. Having just completed the process of getting signed off to solo the chipmunk, I'm already jumping into formation flying with these guys. I'm a little pissed that you're doing this well, to be honest. And it went better than expected. Get everything ready so you'll be all set. Have it primed, have the master generator on, have the mags on. Just everything but with the starter. And then just give me a hands up like this. Okay, so I'm now waiting for him. Have you got everything on? Mags are on, master generator on, radio is off, and I'm yep. ready to start. Stick back. So I give him a, what, what's the sign for I'm ready? You give him a arm bar. Like that. Clear. 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 You just follow behind me, go through plane wings behind, and what we typically do is all this turn, and when I'm on one side, you just be on the other side, and we just do it like that. The crew from the Canadian Historical Aircraft Association treat every formation flight professionally. Everything from startup to taxi is fully briefed. I had several cameras with me on this flight for debrief purposes and I'm really happy to share it. But the production values aren't nearly as good as when I have my film crew with me, which I did have for the full checkout process on the Chipmunk. If you haven't seen it, please check out this series. I'm really proud of what we produced. So this episode won't cover some of the challenges such as the weird breaks in the Chipmunk. Uh, that was a bad juggling. I expected that to be more of a shit show. That was good. It's really about managing the power setting and figuring all that out, right? It's about juggling. Yeah. But the better you are at managing the power setting, the less juggling you have to do. Right. So for this first lesson, Dave did the takeoff and climb out, and then gave me control. Good takeoff, runway one, two. Okay, clear for takeoff with the right turn out. Uh, we'd like to go to south if possible. Approved. Go to information. So I look at him, I give him a... Now right. he's got the run-up, so you we have, go 1500. You have control, right? Yeah, I have full control. Yep. So he's 1500, I look at him, I nod, he nods, karate chop, here comes the brakes. We're rolling together now. Got a hell of a crosswind, he's getting away from me. So Dave flew the takeoff from the backseat on this one, but on a later lesson, I did get to do the takeoff chasing Dave, who was flying the Harvard with Aaron in the back of the chippy. I didn't have my intercom recording cable with me on this flight, but it's really cool to watch. This is my first formation takeoff. It was very strange to do a takeoff staring at lead and not looking down the runway. Another strange sensation was to be adjusting the throttle and essentially reducing power when needed to stay in position. And it was really cool to watch the gear go up on the Harvard while we were climbing out. Probably my biggest takeaway from the little bit of formation training I've done so far is that you have to completely trust who you're flying with. Make sure your briefings are good. And if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. So don't fly with someone if you're not feeling it. Anyway, let's get back on board for that first lesson following Aaron in the Stearman. I think it's hilarious, I think it's hilarious that he deals with those clapping straps and he thinks that's okay. I don't get it either, honestly. <laughs> he's like really annoying. It's very annoying. There's like a, a nice GoPro shot of that right now. He's chewing gum and clapping straps. He's always got gum in his mouth, too. <laughs> this is position for you, okay? Right here. Okay. Oh, look at this position. Yeah. We're about, we're, if, we were, if we were up at the exact same altitude and wings adjacent, we would be roughly three feet apart. Okay. And all you're doing for 90% of the time of the formation, really almost 100% of the time, is, just, is trying to get into position because about 10% of the time you're there and about 90% of the time you're trying to get back in. So, okay. He's leveling off, so I'll start leveling us off here. Okay, so we're pretty much where we need to be. Yeah, but you want to be close. I'll be further away before I give it to you, Ed. I'm not much further away. Dave and I have a fun training dynamic, as you'll know if you've seen the previous episodes. I'm a little pissed that you're doing this well, to be honest. You're actually not, not that far out, and you're not doing anything really crazy yet. Overall, from a first formation flight perspective, your position keeping and your corrective inputs, I'm not expecting you to be in the pocket the entire time, and you weren't, but the inputs you were making were very gentle. They weren't, you know, oh God, I gotta get closer, farther away. Everything was very gentle, almost on the throttle side, a little too gentle. Altitude's actually not that far out right now. I want the uh, tail on my ass. I'm yes, that's done. correct. 
That's very good right there. Push your shower, yellow bear is clearing the zone. It's south, that's 2100. Yellow bear is under tower, clear down with frequency. Yellow bear information. Okay, get forward. That just looks like a fun plane to be on. Oh, sure is. When are you coming for a ride? Or whenever you guys uh, will let me, I guess. Well, we'll work it out. Yeah, you're just kind of out on everything here. Except altitude. You're pretty close on the altitude. The one thing I'm not going to let you do is fly a loose formation. It's just not helpful. Okay. Ah, you felt the bump. Okay, there. That's good, right there. You're doing very well. Ah, okay, so you saw yourself with the back. Yep. So straight and level wasn't so bad. Yeah, so he's happy. Next, we worked on formation turns. When you're on the inside, you have to bring back the power just a little bit because you're flying in a shorter circle. When you're on the outside, you have to give it a lot more power because you're on the other circle. Okay. Um, the other thing too is, we don't stay level, you're going to like come up. So right. if we're turning you on the side, you, you come up. You stay in exactly the same spot yeah. with the airplane. So if you're here, you're like this. Yeah, I get it in theory. <laughs> extension of the web. Telling you right turn, so anticipate the fact that he's turning into you now. And just stay in the same spot, but turning. That's all I want you to do on it. That is almost perfect. A little lower altitude wise. Right there, perfect. Right there. Slow down. Slow down. Speed it up. There you go. That's the three part correction. Yes, but he's one count and now he's leveling off. So you got to throttle up because you were slowing down to do the turn. Roger, yeah. So okay. he'll probably turn to the left now, so you're going to want to get yourself back. He's, he's looking at you thinking, okay, you're not really in position right now, so I'll give you a second yep. as a courtesy. Got to get tighter and closer. Yeah, you got to you got to make more aggressive throttle corrections. Okay. Uh, not like fast moving, just if you need more power, use the power. Yeah. There's a lot of it there available to you. start to see what I mean by the needing to throttle and the turn here. Oh, yeah. so you see how you're slipping back? Yeah. This is really just ridiculous. I can't even believe you're this close. You're doing very, very well. You should be proud of yourself right now. All right, thanks, Ed. That trained well. So that was good. You, you didn't really fall too far back. It tends to be, you know, he'll start turning and somebody just slips way out or they end up going too close and that was fine. You, you tracked fairly well. You just always ended up a little bit too far back. So you just accelerate, go forward, go forward. I, was, I just kept saying, move up, move up, move up. Yeah. No, you, can, you can move in a little closer and a little further up, but you're, you're doing very well. Okay, he's probably going to be coming up on a level out here in a second. You may be one of those guys that can only do this on the right side. Moving up real quick right now. Yep. There you go. Now, now anticipate the need to bring it back. There you go. Because when you make a drastic correction, you're going to need a drastic. Not too high. Way too high. Yep. Bring it down, bring it down. Don't move over too much. There you go. Yeah, so when you make a drastic correction, you're going to need a drastic recovery from the correction. Oh, that's too close. On the uh, lateral vibration. There you go. I haven't looked at my instruments for once. Yeah, no, yeah, you should be. Alright. He gives you a pump, and he wants you to move sides. So that's actually, you throttle back to slip underneath him. And then by the time you're transitioning about mid-section, you should be wide open throttle to catch back up. Like you're full, full power coming back up on the other side. Okay. The camera position wasn't ideal to show a position change on this flight. But another lesson, we covered it pretty well, and again, I was flying with Aaron in the back of the chippy, chasing Dave in the Harvard. Okay, switch position. What was that? So power back. And go to the other side. And go down, yep. Now, full power. And up. very nice. Much better. Yeah, that's cool. That is freaking fun, man. That is a rush. Yep. And here's another fun moment flying with Aaron as I was getting ready to start taking passengers. I up and uh, get them in and then, then, then do it. Yeah, so the briefing for them would be to cover that, which I forgot to say yesterday. Yep.
Yeah. On this flight, the tower pointed out some opposite direction traffic at one point, and I was reminded why staying coordinated with an open cockpit is important. I don't see them. I'm looking at traffic though. I'm just going right out. Uh, airship 151 off Bravo. Uh, it's a little scary. Yeah, well, we're, we're both we're right. right. I'm looking. Do a little wing wag so in case you happen to be looking. So yeah, it's been fun maintaining currency in the chipmunk, but let's get back to that first formation lesson. So we'll do, we'll do line of stern. And so at one point, I'll just give you this, three of these. And all you do is bring back power a little bit, come behind me, uh, line of stern, and then just follow my wings. So and like, it's just like lying like on, on a toe. Yeah. Just do that and that's it. And then um, at one point, I'll wag the wings and that will tell you to come back up. Okay, well, I say line of stern, good. So. I'll yep. take it. I'll show you. Well, actually, you know what? Put us behind him, underneath him. Remember the position change? Yep. Damn yep. it. Put below him. Right about. Get closer. Way closer. Now get on the power. You're going to lose him all the way to full power. I'll put you in position, and I'll show you what it looks like, okay? I have control. You have control. This is freaking ridiculous. <laughs> so what we want, his wheel should be, like, right at the top of your canopy. Is that what about where it looks like? So you see how he's turning? All I'm doing following him through the nerd. This is position right here. Okay. You keep this position, okay? Yep. You have control. I have to go. I know where your position is because i got his wheels right between the two canopies. Very nice. You are right there. Awesome. He's a little off to the right, but you're doing pretty good. You want his nose on your center line. Yep. A little off to the right still. A little far back. He hasn't signaled you yet. He will. Which you're side a do I little go high. Ahead. You're a little high. Well, the two boys and a little far back. There you go. Right side. You always return to your numbered position. Number two is always on this side. So by now I was getting pretty tired and a little sloppy and also realizing I was going to have to land soon.
to turn it off. Okay. Throttle up or you're going to lose them. I just looked back to my tank. Yeah. You know you're going to come up really hot if you don't slow down some more. You're very close to being right on the... You're kind of flirting with it. But you're, you're, you're doing okay here. Alright, so. You don't want to get as you know, reasonably in a position here. He's going to break left. And you're going to count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. And you're going to do the same thing. Okay. We don't want you to pull G. I want you to fall. Yep. A little bit of G. Not, just don't pull 4G and like end up still rolling at about the here. The break is coming in probably 15 seconds. So, as soon as he breaks off and you're 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, you are back in your own airplane. So you should know, you're saying, which runway are we landing on? Well, the one that we're directly over top of. You don't have to worry about him so much now. Yeah. You stay on the outside of him, I want you to worry about landing the airplane now. We're right over our touchdown point. <laughs> at that point, at this airport, we're over top of this V, and I'm like, what are we doing again? And for all I knew, it was runway 7, like, I'm just like, no. Uh, one, two, three, landing left. Yeah, he's landing left, so you're landing on the right side of 1-2, you're in that. You're basically following around for 1-2. You're too high, you're too close. Laps. Yep. But not. So after more than 30 minutes of formation flying, my brain was pretty mushy. Where's Aaron? I, don't I got him. Oh, you're, you're, you're awfully close. Oh yeah? Okay. Well, yeah. there's two. Yeah, we'll go two, two notches here. Remember that he's landing on the left side, you're landing on the right side, so yep. you want to be further back than him too, because he's landing forward. Am I too close to him? No, you're okay, actually. This is a really good separation. You may hit his wake, just be prepared for that. Yep. The rest of the break was damn near perfect. You followed him down right at the right separation. That's about 500 feet apart. Wow, that is like mental exhaustion. I gotta get back into flying in airplane mode. Yeah, you just do what you gotta do. That's his wake. You landed a little close to center line. I would like to see a little farther to the right, but it wasn't enough for me to say anything. That was my worst landing yet. So just when you're on the right side, you're giving him a wide space on the left in case you overshoot him. Right. Yeah, so I saw you look down at the brake handle. Don't look for the brake handle. You know where the brake handle is. You've got enough time now. Just just put your hand down there and find it. That was actually not that bad of a landing, dude. Just don't beat yourself up. I know that's overwhelming to jump back inside the cockpit after that. But man, that was actually pretty impressive for, for, the, for a first flight. So good job. Awesome. All right, thanks. Yeah. Extra thanks to my ongoing sponsors who are making these productions possible despite products not always being featured. And one that I'm rarely able to fit into stories, but I use it all the time, is iCloth Avionics. It's a great product. It cleans everything from iPads to camera lenses. Please check them out. And we've got over 100 episodes in the back catalog now, including the entire Chipmunk training series. So please do visit flightchops.com for the back catalog to join our mailing list and to play our monthly contest. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. I was... Probably one of the best flights of my life. That was a good time, man. Thanks for making that happen. <laughs> no worries. That was good. I'm really impressed, actually. Nice. Couple things we will debrief. Yep.